Good morning, Kids Church. It is Easter. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. 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 So if you guys remember last week when we finished up our story, we had left Jesus in the upper room with his disciples, and they had just had their last meal together. And we know that after that story was when Jesus went to the cross and died on this cross, and his friends were really, really, really sad, and they didn't know what was going to happen. So today, we get to read the rest of the story. Okay, so I'm going to read again from our Jesus Storybook Bible. And this, Which is mine. this one is called God's Wonderful Surprise. And it's Anna's Bible. Yes, I stand corrected. All right, you guys ready for the story? Mm -hmm. Jesus' friends were sad. They would never see their best friend again. How could this happen? Wasn't Jesus the rescuer, the king that God had promised? It wasn't supposed to end like this. But who ever said anything about the end? Just before sunrise on the third day, God sent an earthquake and an angel from heaven. When the guards saw the angel, they fell down with fright. The angel rolled the stone away, sat on top of it, and waited. At the first glimmer of dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other women headed to the tomb to wash Jesus' body. The early morning sun slanted through the olive trees, drops of dew glittering on leaves and grasses, and the friends walked quietly along the hilly path through the olive groves until they reached the tomb. And immediately they noticed something odd was wide open. They peered through the opening into the dark tomb, but wait, the tomb was empty. Jesus was gone. And something else, a shining man was there with clothes made from lightning. Don't be scared, the angel said. They couldn't help it, they screamed anyway. The angel asked them, what are you doing here? This is a tomb and tombs are for dead people. The women couldn't speak. Jesus isn't dead anymore, he said. He is alive. And their hearts leapt and the angel laughed with such gladness that they felt for a moment as if they had wakened from a nightmare. The other women rushed home, but Mary stayed behind. How could it be true? Jesus was definitely dead. How could he be alive? Just then, Mary heard someone else in the garden. Maybe it's the gardener, she thought. He'll know where Jesus' body is. I don't know where Jesus is, Mary said urgently. I can't find him. But it was all right. Jesus knew where she was, and he had found her. Mary, only one person had ever said her name like that. She heard her heart thumping. She turned around. She shaded her eyes to see the figure and thought she was dreaming. But she wasn't dreaming. She was seeing. Jesus! Mary fell to the ground. Tears filled her eyes and great sobs shook her body and all she wanted in that moment was to hold on to Jesus and never let him go. But Jesus told her, you can hold me later and I'll always be close to you, but now please go and tell the others that I am alive. I can only imagine what Mary felt like when she saw Jesus. That would have been pretty amazing. So Mary ran and ran and ran all the way to the city. She'd never run so fast or far in all her life. She felt like she could run forever. She didn't even feel like her feet touched the ground. The sun was dancing and gleaming and bounding across the sky, racing with her and shining brighter than she could ever remember. And it seemed to her that morning as she ran, almost as if the whole world had been made anew, almost as if the whole world was singing for joy, the trees, the tiny sounds in the grass, the birds, and her heart. Was God really making everything sad come untrue? Was he making even death come untrue? She couldn't wait to tell Jesus' friends. They won't believe it, she laughed. And they didn't. I love that story. I love that... Um, that he took the time to show his friends that he was alive and that in their sadness, when they were missing their best friend, he brought them amazing and incredible joy. Um, today, I wanted to talk about butterflies. Now, why do you think we were gonna talk about butterflies on Easter? Do you have any ideas? Um, because Easter um, is 
colorful and butterflies can be colorful. Oh, that's a good thought because butterflies are colorful. Do you have any ideas? Because um, what Anna said. Yeah. Well, a lot of times butterflies are used at Easter time. Oh, do you want to give another guess? What? Because, um, um, We'll we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so butterflies are used a lot of times at churches at Easter time to remember the resurrection. And the reason is because just like Jesus went into the tomb and they wrapped him in the cloths and they laid his body in the tomb, and then what happened three days later? He rose. He became alive and he came out of the tomb and he was a new creation. And just like that, butterflies are little caterpillars. And then what happens to the caterpillars? They turn into butterflies. They turn into butterflies, right? They get all wrapped up in their cocoon and they wait and they wait and they wait. And then when they come out, there's something new and something beautiful, right? They're butterflies. They're butterflies. So we can remember not only about Jesus dying, being put in the tomb, waiting and waiting and waiting, and he came back and he conquered death and he was alive. But we can also remember that God makes us new, doesn't he? Do you guys remember when we talked about Jesus these last several months, some of the stories that we talked about? Do you remember when Jesus healed the blind men, where he made their eyes to see? And what else did we talk about? We talked about, um, do you remember the centurion's servant? He was sick. And what did Jesus do? Make him not sick. Made him not sick. And then what about when Jesus' friends were on the boat and there was a big storm? What happened? Um, he calmed the storm by saying, be still. He calmed the storm by saying, be still. And now, now we know that even death was not too big for Jesus, was it? Jesus is king over everything, even death. So today what we're going to do, last week we talked about making a whaling wall out of Legos, which you can see our lovely whaling wall here. And this week, this week we have been writing prayers. Some of these prayers are maybe things we're sad about that we wanted to offer to God and ask God to take care of. Some of these things are even I'm sorry prayers. I don't know if you guys have ever done I'm sorry prayers to God to talk about things that you're sorry about, that you a mistake that you made. But so we've yeah. been we've been writing prayers all week. And what we're going to do, I'm going to teach you how you can take your prayers from your wailing wall or just any piece of paper if you didn't write prayers. We are going to make them into butterflies to remind us that God can take things that are hard. He can take things that are sad. He can make them something beautiful. He can make them into something brand new. Okay, so let me make show you guys, butterfly. which today is a butterfly. Yes. This one's mine. Okay, I'll do this one. Yeah. Here, Caleb, do you want to do this one? Um, do y'all want to share any of your prayers? Do you want to read any of them? You don't have to yes. if you don't want to. You do want to read them? Yeah. What are some of your prayers I'm say? all of them. Let's not read all of them, but you can maybe pick one. Because then we're going to show how to do the butterflies. Yeah. Read it. Anna was feeling very sad that she had to wait to be baptized. She was looking forward to being baptized. That was an I'm sad prayer. I don't have to. I wrote a prayer for our doctors to be safe, for mm -hmm. people to, to yeah, heal yeah. that are sick. And um, there were I'm sorry I prayers on there for getting angry and being frustrated. We had lots of prayers. Okay, so now we're going to fold these into butterflies. So everybody take a square. We're going to show our friends here how to make a butterfly, okay? So everybody take a square. And I'll post the example of how to do this so your parents will have can help yeah, you figure it out. Okay, everybody take your square, mm -hmm. and we're going to fold it in half. Just like that. Line your edges up. Let me help you line them. Hold on. Let me line you up those edges up real square. Okay, now push them. Yeah. Good job. Okay. Now open it up. Okay. Open it up. And fold it in half the other way. Fold it in half this way? Yep. Fold it in half that way. Good job. Push down. <laughs> okay. Now. We're going to turn it upside down. Pick up the face, sister. Okay, turn it up, upside down. Now we're going to fold it corner to corner and make a triangle. Okay, let me help you. Make, try to make it as straight as you can. It helps if it's nice and straight. 
Hold on, hold on. Before you push down, let's see how we gotta make, square up our corners there. Okay, good job. All right, now open it. Make a triangle the other way. So line the other corners up and make a triangle. Wait, I'm still on okay. the fourth triangle. This one. Perfect job, Caleb. Anna, are you Wait, needing some help? Uh, should we do it that way? Yeah, do it that way. No, we let it go. Like, let it it's kind of like a salt. Like a, oh, like it's sharp? Like a pyramid? Mm -hmm. So actually what we're going to do now, so, to, so where you have your pyramid like that, mm -hmm. we, okay, so you're going to take it where it's kind of pointed up, Mm -hmm. And you're going to fold these part, this part in so that you have a triangle, what? a double-decker triangle, okay? How did, How did I do it? That was tricky. So you got your little point. Mm -hmm. So take the two sides, pull them in, and then fold this down so you have one double-decker triangle. It's Good job, so Anna. Okay. Kind of so that was really good. So now that you've got your double-decker triangle, you're gonna lay it in front of you, put it in front of you. Now you're gonna take a corner. A mm corner. -hmm. And you're not gonna pick up the whole corner, just one top layer of the corner, okay? That one. And you're gonna fold it up to the point. So fold it up to the point. No, no, I need. And fold it down. Pretty close, hold on, hold on. Pretty close, buddy. Oh, I see what you did. That was a little tricky. So take this one up, like that. See? And do it so now with you've got, the other one. And then do it with the other one. Okay, so that pull pull up the other point. So when you, after you do that, you should have two points folded up. This one. This one right here. Like this. Good job, Anna. Good job, yeah. Caleb. Okay, now take the whole thing and flip it. Just flip it upside down. Now you're going to take this point and you're going to fold it up. Now here's the trick. When you fold it up, you don't want it to just go to the top. You're going to actually fold it a little bit higher than the top so it makes these bottom ones bend forward a little bit. Okay? Hold on, buddy. I'll help you. I'll help you. Okay? So you're going to fold it up a little above the top and then you're going to fold your point. I think I across the back. Do it. That's okay, I'll help you. So you're going to fold your point this? across your back like that. Okay. I okay. Let me help Caleb. So you point, pull this one up and see how I did it just right above? Mm -hmm. And then you fold it there. So hold on to it right there for me. Yeah. Okay. So you fold it up yum, yum, and yum, fold yum, it over. Yum, yum. So oh, hold that. Did I make my butterfly? We're almost done. So now what we're going to do. So now that we've got that little bitty point folded up over the back, we're going to take our whole butterfly and you're going to you're going to do it in half where the point is. So pull the wings together right there over where it was folded. Look at it. It's terrible. That was pretty close except you folded it backwards, Caleb, but that was pretty close. So you're going to take it where the point is. See where your point is? Mm -hmm. And you're going to fold it on top of where that point got folded over. Okay. I can't do it. There you go. Now you have a butterfly. Like this. Okay. Yeah, you got it, sister. Okay. You got it. And we've got lots of paper to terrible. It doesn't look terrible. No, we've got lots of paper to no, practice with. Go? So now we have some butterflies and we're gonna keep folding after we turn off the video at our house. We've got lots of butterflies. And you can use your butterflies to decorate your house for Easter. You could tape them on the wall or maybe get a big bowl on the table and put them in a in a bowl or get some string and string them together and you can hang them over a window. And what I want you to do is whenever you see your butterflies hanging in your house, I want you to remember that Jesus died and he rose and remember that God makes things brand new. He can take things and he can heal them. He can make things that are hard and sad and he can make them have joy. I know when Ray White might have done butterflies because they can fly into heaven. They can fly up into heaven. That's true. Okay, so we we are going to close with um, a prayer. Okay, you guys ready to close in prayer? So what we're gonna do? We're gonna do a um, response prayer. So I will start, and whenever I say Christ is risen, I want you guys to say. He has risen indeed. That's right. Christ has, Christ has risen indeed. Okay, you guys ready to pray? You show me your yes. praying hands. You could do your praying hands. You could fold them like this. You could open them like this. You could do this. Whatever kind of praying hands you want to do, okay? I'm going to do mine like this. And what do we do with our eyes when we're praying? 
Okay. All right. Everybody, let's pray. Okay. Dear God, thank you for being with us today. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen indeed. Thank you for sending us Jesus. Christ is risen. Christ has risen indeed. Thank you for Jesus giving up his life for us. Christ is risen. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Thank you for bringing Jesus back to life. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. And thank you, God, for making all things brand new. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. All right, friends, we hope you have a wonderful, it was wonderful just Easter. A <laughs> Can you say happy Easter? Happy, oh happy Easter. All right, friends, we will see you here next week. Bye, everybody. Can you say bye? Bye. 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 <laughs>